Homelessness in Canada remains one of those pressing social issues that we've just been confounded in how to resolve it over the last two or three decades. We've seen rises in the number of individuals who are homeless on Canadian streets on any given night. Estimates are somewhere around 30,000 Canadians tonight will have nowhere to go. And that has been one of those issues that we just have not been able to resolve in a meaningful manner. We've tried counting people, we've tried redirecting resources, but overall we haven't made much of a serious dent. Although over the last decade, all levels of government have really focused in on long-term plans, more innovative solutions, and we're moving in the right direction. We're seeing more cities being a bit more innovative in the types of interventions they're using to end homelessness. But regardless of all that effort, Canada still remains among nations who have not been able to meaningfully reduce the number of individuals homeless. Canada is a big country and from uh, coast to coast, uh, shore to shore, we continue to see different approaches to ending homelessness. And part of that stems from the fact that what is present on the streets of Moncton to what's present in Montreal, Vancouver, Toronto and Winnipeg or even our northern communities, the factors that contribute to why people are on the streets are so varied. And that makes it difficult to have a national strategy that realizes how distinct and how um, different each city is in terms of how they need to respond. Say in a high cost city like Vancouver where affordability is going to drive some of the circumstances of why people are on the streets. In Winnipeg and say Regina, Saskatoon and Prairie cities, we actually see a regional reflection of a high indigenous population that is overrepresented on our streets. So the solutions in the prairies, again, are going to be distinct from Toronto and Montreal to what we see in, in Vancouver. The National Housing Strategy has been one of those solutions that has been called on by activists and housing uh, operators for the last uh, two, three decades, actually. I think it's an important step for Canadians to understand that an investment in the scale of $40 billion, which will be rolled out over 10 years, is absolutely transformative and significant. The fact of the matter is, if we can get that plan realized and build 300,000 homes while renovating an additional 300,000, that is going to have a significant impact on the supply side of the factors that contribute to homelessness. Building housing does not on its own end homelessness. Housing shortfalls isn't necessarily the main cause of homelessness, it's the personal situational characteristics combined with that. So we really need to focus in on why are individuals becoming homeless? Why have we not stopped that? And we also need to focus on when somebody actually becomes homelessness and they enter the system, they present themselves at a shelter, they present themselves at a, an emergency ward in Canada. How do we address those needs? And that's distinct from just the home itself. Causes of homelessness are immensely distinct and they're very personal. It's very hard to, this is why definitions of homelessness become very problematic for people because they rarely capture the true essence of the fact that anybody can become homeless in Canada. And I, I mean that in the sense that when we look across the board, there's really no group that is not represented within the, the homeless population, whether it's uh, ethno-cultural, whether it's socioeconomic, whatever factor we want to look at, there's representation. So I think what we really need to begin to focus in on is individualizing our understanding of homelessness by a person-to-person -person relationship building, where we begin to understand why that person is on the streets. What were the main causes to that individual? Whether it was a pathway brought on by mental health, whether it was a pathway brought on purely by addiction, family breakdown, economic circumstances. There are so many factors that roll up into who is present on our streets today, the 30,000 that I mentioned earlier. But the solutions are so individual based, it becomes really difficult because we want to come up with a one, one shoe fits all, but rarely does that happen. Housing First is a very complex mental health intervention aimed at ending homelessness for individuals who are struggling with mental health issues. And the intent of Housing First is yes, to provide housing, but equally important is to provide a comprehensive set of individualized supports and a really more one-to-one, small caseload style of, of intervention. 
So imagine um, a housing first team comprised of 10 really, uh, really highly skilled individuals who have a caseload of about 100 people. So for every 10 persons in that, in that uh, caseload, they have a staff member. That's the beauty of a housing first team. The ratio between staff and clients is kept small because they can build relationships. And my view is housing first is really about establishing a very important relationship with an individual on a one-to-one -one basis to really get to the heart of why that person is homeless. And if you can reduce the scale and really get to know that person, build a rapport, build trust, you can really work to end that cycle of homelessness by really just understanding the problems. Ending homelessness is going to require a tremendous number of solutions. Housing First is one of them. Other treatment programs, other interventions are equally important. So it's going to cost money. And I think what the federal government has said in the, in the last budget is, we're going to commit $40 billion over a 10-year period to prime the pump to address some of the supply side issues of homelessness, the gap in affordable housing. We now need to have provincial governments, municipal governments, foundations, charities and others to really push things forward and find the right sets of solutions and funding models to figure out what we need to do and how. But what's really going to drive the engine of change for homelessness is community-based organizations developing local plans, local ideas, local solutions to the people that they know best, and that's their community members on their streets. And until we can get to that, we'll continue to struggle because nationally, there are no solutions from Ottawa that will fit in Winnipeg. But in Winnipeg, with the support of Ottawa, we can come up with ideas as good as they can do in Lethbridge, Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Whitehorse, Iqaluit, wherever you want to be, it has to be led by communities using other supports of government because we have to have a systems approach that's focused in on a community up uh, solution. And I will say that at, at a grassroots community level, we have a tremendous resolve among social organizations who are doing the right thing. You know, they're providing temporary shelters, they're out there with blankets, they're out there triaging the situation, they're providing temporary shelters in our missions and soup kitchens and our drop-in centers. But all those supports and services which are tremendously vital to supporting homelessness don't necessarily work towards ending. And each of those community groups are doing everything they can. Their, their staff, their volunteers are running on vapor. They're dealing with tremendous situations. But we still haven't really prepared ourselves to prevent in the long term. That is working with our, our young children today, our, our youth, our older adults that are, are increasingly at risk. So everything we're doing right now is really focused in on resolving homelessness for somebody who's gone through a system, who's gone through stages of their lives that are on the street. But we actually now need to figure out how do we reach back and prevent. And that starts with you know working in our schools, working with kids, working with youth. And youth in particular are becoming more and more at risk to become homeless. And one thing we know from the evidence is the sooner we can intervene in a person's uh, life cycle of becoming homeless, the better likelihood we have for long-term uh, stability in their housing outcomes, right? We want to get to people not after uh, two days, three days, or 10 years on the streets. We want to get there just before, and we want to prevent. But when somebody does become homeless, we want to intervene as quick as we can with the right sets of supports to ensure we have a better outcome in the long term. And that's where we need to start focusing attention on. But if you ask me, in my 20 years of direct experience in this, in this sector, we're at a high point right now. And we need to harness what's being offered by the federal government, and we need to jump on board, and we need to make some change happen in the next five years.